this is Pastor Price. I am glad to be able to bring you a message from God today. I truly wish we would, could continue our drive-in worship, but in obedience to Bishop Richardson, the Episcopal leader of Florida, I greet you this morning in the name of Jesus from the comfort of my home. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, bless each of us today. Bless us, O oh God, to receive your Holy Spirit. God, help us to be comforted, to be strengthened, to be guided by your love and your presence. Allow us, O oh God, to share your power and your ways in a world that's unsettled. Be our God. Be our protection. Be our provision. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, I would like you to Join in and read with me a passage of scripture found in the Gospel of St. John. And in this passage of scripture, John, the 20th chapter, tells us in the 21st verse, Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, and they, they are forgiven them. If you retain sins on any, they are retained. Beloved, for a few moments, I want to talk to you all from the theme, receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, I truly believe that the Holy Spirit is a great gift from God. And that the Holy Ghost is God's way of manifesting God's presence in the life of the believer. It's interesting to me that in this text in John, uh, we meet a group of people who live with an expectation for the Messiah. I remember when John the Baptist was in jail waiting to, to be put to death. He sent word by his disciples and his disciples asked, are you the one? And Jesus said to John's disciples, check my records. What do you see? Take John my receipt. He said, the blind are receiving sight. People are being healed. Miracles are happening. Ministry is moving forward. Those who have been ostracized and left behind are being restored to community. Let my record speak for who I am. But that same Jesus, his disciples watched him go to Calvary's cross. And I can imagine them being unsettled because here their champion, the man who fed 5,000 men, not including women and children with three fish and five loaves, the man who fed another 4,000 with the fragments that he collected from the last 
beating and the man who they watched raise Lazarus from the dead, the man they watched curse a fig tree and the fig tree with a the man they witnessed turn over the temp tables in the temple from where the hierarchy of his own faith tradition was corrupting God's house. That man, bold and bodacious, the one that they witnessed one time when they tried to push him off a cliff and he just walked right through the people who were trying to kill him. It was that Jesus that they had been with for three and a half years and watched him do miracles. The same Jesus who, who gave them power one time to cast demons out of people. They watched him go through Rome's worst punishment. They watched him go through a court held by the high priest and simply ignored the high priest. He said to the high priest, you have no right to hear my case. This is the wrong court. And if you're accusing me of being a king, I will not be charged by a flunky. And, 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 and they saw this man get brutalized and hung on a cross. So they were unsettled. And as they were in an unsettled place, and they were gathered together and, and here he appears to them and he says, peace, I give you. Not as the world gives, but as my father gives, I give to you. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that Jesus gives them God's presence. My brothers and sisters, peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace does not mean that there are no waves out in the ocean. Peace does not mean that trouble won't come your way. Peace means that even when trouble comes, even when it's raining sideways, even when the rain flips your umbrella inside out, even when the storms of life beat against you and you don't know what to do, that God's presence is there with you. And wherever God's presence is, God is in charge. And so, beloved, I want you to know that even being unsettled by COVID-19, that, that God is still with us, that even though we are wondering whether we are going to be sick or, or whether we are going to have jobs or whether we are going to be able to, to be out and about by Mother's Day, that it doesn't matter that oil barrel prices drop down in the toilets, that God is still our God and he's still in control and that God will take care of us. My brothers and sisters, peace is knowing that whatever comes your way, that whatever the circumstances of life are, that God is bigger than your circumstance. Peace is knowing that God's character is stable and it is the foundation of your life. And because God is in your life, that everything going to work out in your favor. And Jesus wanted them to know that God was with them. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that that same peace that Jesus gave these 11 disciples is the same peace that permeates your presence. That if you unite your life with God, that God is there with you. And that no matter what happens, God is in control. Sometimes, beloved, God will send something to unsettle you so that it'll be easy for God to move you where God wants you to be. Sometimes the greatest things that happen in our lives are crisis because crisis get us out of our comfort zone and make us lean on God more. 
And that's the invitation that God was giving his disciples, that, that though you are unsettled and living in a dangerous time, though uncertainty was all around them, God wanted them to know that peace, that I'm with you, that my presence, that the substance of who I am is merged into your life. That it encapsulates your being. So God gives you peace. In other words, God gives you God's self. Then, beloved God, then, beloved Jesus, the Word made flesh, breathes His Spirit, His very essence, His Ruach, his, his Numa, onto and into his disciples. He gives them the breath of God. He gives them the wind of God to direct them. And he merges his spirit into their spirits and becomes one with them. In other words, God... Um, God becomes your source of inspiration, your, your diet. God becomes your guide. I, I have a good buddy, and I won't give you his name, but he had a, a white F-150, and he took his F-150 out on the interstate in Louisiana, and he flew up the vehicle, and on the dash it had where the truck got up to 160 and when he got up around 97, he said the vehicle just wouldn't go no faster. He got back to his house disappointed and he flipped open the owner's manual to the truck and the, the owner manual said the truck had what was called the governor. The governor regulated the, 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 the speed of the truck. The governor tapped the speed of his truck at 97 miles an hour. So my friend got on the internet and found him a, 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 a tool that would turn the governor off on his truck and got back in his vehicle and put his police badge in his vehicle and he got back up on the interstate when the road was clear and he said when he got his vehicle up to 140, he smiled, he was happy because the governor had took the restraints when he turned the governor off, it took the restraints off his vehicle. And beloved, I want you to know that when God breathes God Holy Spirit into you, that God puts God's presence in you and his presence limits how comfortable you can be in your sin. And I believe that some of us reject the Holy Spirit I believe that some of us, when God tries to breathe God's presence into our lives, we reject it. I tell you that, that when I look at the decadent leadership that we have in the United States, when, when, when they write a bill that's supposed to be for small businesses and they allow major corporations like Ruth Chris, when they allow the Harvard University with the richest endowment in the United States to be able to get an SBA loan when, when small mom and pop businesses who really need it can't get a dime, but Harvard could get six to eight million dollars. There is something wrong with the decadent leadership of our country. I believe that they just turned off restraint. I believe that they just turned off the presence of the Holy Spirit in the process of governing this country. And God wants you to know that when God blows God's Holy Spirit into your life, that God brings God's presence in your life and it guides you away from those evil things that you do. That, that God wants to, the more you spend time in God's presence and in God's word, God starts to change your thoughts and, and God starts to control or govern your mind that, that God's Holy Spirit Spirit, when he breathes his presence into you, starts to make you do different with your life. In other words, it shapes your choices. In other words, that it 
that it's like a head wind that, that when Satan comes with a distraction, that God is that head wind that keeps you going in another direction. That, that when the road waves come, that God's presence just guides you on through. That when he has control of you, that God really does take you through a process to where God blesses you and God changes how you see you. And God changes the nature of who you are for God's glory. Then, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that after God governs your life, after he breathes, after God breathes God's Holy Spirit into your life, that when the Holy Spirit dwells in you, and when the Holy Spirit saturates you, that the Holy Spirit keeps you going in the way God needs you to go. And then God, after breathing God's spirit into them, God does something fascinating. And God sends them out. And God gives them power to forgive sins. He gives them power to change the world and to, to change how people see themselves and how people use their life and their testimony that, that God sends you out special and that God sends you out to spread God's love that God sends you out to show people that there's a better way to live that there's a better way to think that there is a better way to use your life and your life that God changes the character of who you are and that God puts something so valuable in you that you can't just do any and everything and that God puts something in you that makes you want to share how God has improved your life, how God has sustained you when you were unsettled, that God puts something in you that makes you want to tell the world this joy that I have. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. That God gets in you and God moves. And then God lets your life show people that God gave you a new set of principles. When, when you receive the Holy Ghost, God starts to, to let you pull your britches up by your waistline. That, that God starts to take vulgarity out of your mouth and out of your life. That when, when, when God comes in, God helps you learn how to manage your resources better. And, and God takes you from being stingy to being generous. And when you start sharing your love, your light, your life with others, God starts to elevate you. God starts to bless you because God has consecrated you to God's self. And when you receive God's Holy Ghost, you become a part of his kingdom. And when you are a representative of the kingdom, then God doesn't send his ambassadors. God doesn't send God's representation. God doesn't send God's self out raggedy. God starts to dress you up different. God starts to help you become better. God starts to move in your life and you find that your thoughts are less depressing. God starts to work on you and you start to, to take in God's word and you start to act different with power. You start to speak to people different. You start to love on people when you used to hate on people. You start to forgive people when you used to hold grudges against people. That when God's Spirit gets in you, you become a person with a whole different character. And then God lets you live out God's principles. In other words, your actions share with people the very essence of the word of God. 
my brothers and sisters, and that's why you got to spend time with God. Because God's Holy Spirit grows in you and it fills you up from your, from your feet to the top of your head. And it starts to change who you are and it changes how you live, how you love. When, when, when God sent his disciples out, they, they turned an upside down world right size up. Um, 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 they, they went and they lived such a different life where people who had been constantly cheated by their religious officials. But when the, when the good church man by the name of Caiaphas was, was cheating them, when, when, when the disciples showed them the love of God, they, they decided that they were no longer going to feed those who feasted off of them. They, they, saw, they, they saw their lives different, and instead of, instead of helping those who were hurting them, they helped those who were hurting like them. And they made up about 10% of the Roman population, but yet God used their love, their light, their testimony, their story, and it turned the world right side up. And, and the next thing you know that, that as Rome even persecuted them and, and Rome killed them and Rome beat on them and the, the Jewish hierarchy labeled them, labeled them, them corrupt and, and, and yet God validated their lives and God used their testimony to change the life of others and to bring the world to a better place. So what I'm saying to you is that when you receive the Holy Ghost, God lets you speak truth to people who are abusing power. That when you receive the Holy Ghost, God lets you live different than a world that unsettled you in the first place. That God teaches you to depend on Him and no other source. So my brothers and sisters, I'm reminded of when I was a child that my grandmama taught me that if you love God, he'll be a mother when you're motherless. Uh, my grandmama told me that God would hold you in God's bosom of love and God would protect you. And I've come to tell you today that it's true that when you receive the Holy Spirit, God will guide you past your troubles. Don't want to trouble you long, but I want to invite you to just let God in your heart. There was a song the old church used to sing, heist up the window, open up the doors, and let God come on in. And I tell you that when you let the Holy Ghost come on into your life, that God will change who you are, that God will get into somebody that used to be vulgar, that used to cuss, that used to fuss and fight, that used to disrespect others, and God will change them into a pillar in the community, that God will take a drug dealer that used to cripple the community, and God will change their life, and there will be a blessing in the community. That when God breathes God's spirit in you, that God changes who you are. That the almighty God will use your life and that the almighty God will bless your life. That when you just receive his gift, that he leaves you his power, his protection. His provision. Receive his gift. Receive his Holy Ghost. And watch God bless your life. God bless you. And God keep you. In Jesus' name.